Hi there, I'm uh, Chris Evans from XP Yacht Rigging. Today on uh, Practical Boat Owners uh, Boat Maximus, we're going to just run through a correct process to safely mount out halyards um, and then ultimately work towards replacing the halyards with new ones and then refitting them back in. Um, here I've got in front of me a few tools that we'll need for that process. Um, I've got just simply uh, a knife, um, PVC electrical tape, it's white and then a pen to then label the tape um, so we can appropriately name all the halyards beforehand. A little bit of standard conventional whip and twine, nothing special, found in all chanderies. Um, and then just some sound makers needles, again, um, found in all chanderies. Um, and then we've got some, what we call mouse line in the trade. So that's just, in simple terms, uh, a messenger line that will then attach onto the end of a halyard and then we can run this through the mast. We would spe specify this to be around three to four millimeters. Um, that's a good size. It will run freely through clutches and uh, through blocks, but also if it goes too thin, there's a tendency for it to, to jump down the side of a, a pulley or a sheave on a, on a mast or on a, on a foot block. Okay, so here's a halyard which we're uh, intending on removing out the mast to replace this rope or alternatively to wash them. Um, we've basically cut off uh, a short length, probably about sort of 12 inches of um, whipping twine onto the end of a needle. And then what we're looking to do is basically stitch here uh, a triple loop with just a little overhand thumb knot um, to then attach the um, mouse line appropriately onto the end. There's one full loop there. And then we're looking just to replicate that again. So then that gives us two loops and then two towels. And then we're just looking to do a very simple overhand thumb knot in the end of the towels. It's waxed whipping twine, so that knot will stay fairly secure with a little bit of wax. And then what that leaves us with, that leaves us a very neat little towel which is whipped around three times. And then when we come to attach our um, what we call mouse line, for simplicity, we just literally pass it through and we'll just do a long longish bowling like so and that'll leave that fairly secure you can find that some clutches can be quite tight for that to run through or you can have sometimes difficult getting it through the pulleys the sheave boxes on the mast so what you can do is a little bit of bowling and braces we can just simply get he says <laughs> A little bit of uh, masking tape, sorry, PVC tape, and 
we can just wrap over the top just a fair fair the whole piece over just allowing it just to run slightly freer this is not necessary every time but it just takes a little bit of risk out of it and holds it all in place and secure just giving a nicely uh, attached mouse line to Halliard then that should run quite smoothly through the mast so we've got the end of the main Halliard here it's prepared again with our little um, right turn three wraps just a simple little top one I'm not in a bit of uh, wax whipping twine. So we're now looking to attach that onto the um, end of the mouse line. The way we do that is we just again, we just pass straight through and then we just do a slightly longer bowling. Like so. So generally when you're mousing out Halliard it's something that you may want to do on your own and you won't have a second pair of hands. I wouldn't advise to hold a reel of rope and then pull it off like so. Because what that will do is that will in, that'll induce uh, twists into the rope. So what I'd suggest is we simply utilise the guard wires that we've got on board and we'll simply just tie the mouse line off with some simple little hitches they don't, they don't need to be anything special as long as they're not going to come undone and then we've just improvised ourselves a little holder for a spool just a simple little hitch and then as we're single handed when we pull when the halyard is then pulled through the mast it should neatly then come off the spool not inducing any further twists into the rope open that clutch up fully we can then just walk forward to the mast guide our rope through and then simply Nicely come uh, the halyard has now nicely come out of the rig with the mouse line attached. I would um, suggest when it does come out uh, to leave these in situ. I'd say remove it from the end of the halyard. Just as a tip, for example, this is a main halyard, so I'd say tie this uh, to the back of the boom because then it'll hold it free away from the rig, and it will stop any risk of the rope chafing over over the period of time when the halyard's removed, especially through the winter months. So again, I just tie that off with 
with a bowling and just a little hitch on the end of the tail of the bowling. I'll then be looking to pull this quite taut, believe it or not. The tauter it is, it will just stay uh, nice and secure and be seated nicely on the sheaves and the pulleys and the blocks and so forth. Um, just allow yourself a little bit of tarot, probably around a metre. Then just look to chop that section clear. And then, as another tip, I would say, for example, this is the main halyard. Tie it back over onto the clutch. And then again, nice and taut. Just do a few hitches through here. And then that's nice and safe and secure for the period of time when the halyard's removed. And from what I can see at this main halyard, you can you can uh, differentiate between the section that's been in the mast, which hasn't had much UV damage. Uh, that's very clean and tidy. That's structurally very sound. But then the the area that's been exposed to the sun is much much rougher it's got much more uh, um, raised fibers and yarns um, so there's mechanical degradation there then there's also UV degradation from the sunlight um, and physically to the touch it's much stiffer than the section that's been hidden away now we've removed the uh, halyard we're just going to come on to label them because once you've got a big pile of halyards in the boot of the car, you'll never remember which one did what. So I'd suggest simply take some lengths of tape. And then simply permanent marker on uh, the suitable label uh, rope. Now is a good opportunity, uh, I should have mentioned it earlier, before the halyard is removed, sometimes you can find that over the years a little bit's been cut off or it can be made too short. Now is a good opportunity with purchasing a new halyard to, uh, to either go to the chandler and buy that little bit extra or, or talk to your, your rigger or your sow maker and, and order that little bit extra on your halyard. So I would simply, for example on this one, it was, it was probably about approximately two metres too short. So I'll do, I'll label it main halyard one side and then the other side I'll just literally just go plus, plus two metres and then that'll remind me that that one, once it's spliced one end, cut and whipped the other end, it will be made up length overall plus two metres. Yeah. So now we've removed this halyard, uh, we can do a nice little cheeks way of uh, getting this neat and tidy and coiled up. Um, you can utilise the hardware on board the boat, holding one end in one hand, wrapping around the winch, and then you're looking to then cross over and create figure of eights. The reason we do a figure of eight is it doesn't induce any twist into the rope. So now the halyards are going to be removed and all the sheets and the control lines. Now is a good opportunity to give these decks a really good uh, clean down. Um, the issue we can have is if we put lovely bright fresh white ropes, this verdigris and the greenery is just going to come out and stain the ropes. So take the opportunity while the decks are clear and there's no ropes, it's a lovely simple time to, to give it a deep clean.